All right, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, March 28th, 2012. Um, it's Michael from CFRN. We're going to go through all the trades we went through this morning in the live trading room. Um, the results, let's get those out of the way quickly. We are down one tick on the YM, and we're up six ticks on the Russell. Okay. Um, we didn't take any ES trades. I'll show you where they would have set up in a few minutes. But I was really trading the Russell mostly this morning, and... I'll go through all those trades. Um, if you are in here on a free trial, uh, tomorrow night is our partners meeting. Uh, we go through a ton of stuff in the partners meetings. It's really good information. All the partners share everything that they have going on. And we have a new indicator that we're going to introduce tomorrow night that is actually going to simplify a lot of things for our partners. Um, you'll be able to turn a whole bunch of things, just turn them on and off. You know, just a simple yes or no or true or false question to print, to turn things on and off. I'm going to introduce that, show how to use it in the partners meeting, um, and go over the stuff that we've been doing in on the Russell here. Okay, there's there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on, and it would be great for all the partners to be in there. And if you're in here on a trial and you want to be in the partners meeting. Um, you should have gotten an email from me with what you need to do to become a partner to get in there. And if you are on the trial and you did not get an email from me, um, you can either email me at support at cfrn.net or you can check your, I would check your junk or spam folders because sometimes they go right in there. But either way, you can email me at uh, support at cfrn.net. Okay, and I will get you the information you need. All right. That said, let's get on to the markets. On the ES, I didn't take any trades on the ES today because I was focused on the Russell mostly this morning, but what I wanted to show was this. This morning when the market started to fall apart. All right, what time was this? This was 9.46. We had a pierce of a red envelope right here with a green trend strength line suggesting the market was going to move down. Now, it had done it over here as well. Basically the same place over here. It did it at 14.06 over here, suggesting it was going to move down to 14.01 to 1400. And then it did it again right here at 1405, suggesting it's going to move down to 1399 to 1400. All right, um, that happens to be right where our weekly trading zone is below us. Um, finally, it did it one more time over here. Another heads up, saying look for the short trades. Um, right here, it did it at 1404, saying it's going to get down to probably 1398, 1397. Okay, and you can see. It got all the way down here to 1392.75. Um, the opportunity to enter on this move down after the bearish cross, we had to pull back up to the BBC right here, right here where I drew this arrow in was an opportunity to enter that. Um, it's pulled back up to the BBC right here. We the cycle is over bought right now so it's in a good spot to short if it came together and gave you the opportunity but it looks like it's trying to work its way back up here to 1399-1400 zone okay that's what we had this morning on the ES there were some four tick range trades that set up on the ES um, I did not get into any of them there was one right here that was pointed out by one of our one of our partners this morning who wrote it out and took the took the profit on that one I think there was another one uh, 920 was this one right in here? I think there was another one right in here. That I don't know if that actually stopped out. 14, 1405.75 and it went up to 1407.75. So depending on where you got in on that, um, you may have stopped out on that or you may have taken two points profit. But I did not trade any of those now. Um, let's go over here to the YM. I took two trades on the YM this morning. This was the first one. It pulled up here to the BBC. I shorted it there at the BBC. It gave me seven ticks profit. I wasn't watching the trade, or I would have moved my stop to break even. It turned around, and it stopped me out here for minus 11 ticks. Okay, but it did give me seven ticks profit first. It went down toward the MA1. It didn't actually close the whole window of opportunity, but it closed most of it. Then we had a bullish cross, and I went long here on the pullback to the BBC. And that gave me 10 ticks profit. That's what ended with a net of minus one tick. Okay, um, all right, then the thing turned around and it dropped down here. We didn't have, um, 
we didn't have any opportunity here. Okay, we didn't have any opportunity right here. Uh, it pulled it back up, and when this was happening, I mean, in this big move down, we didn't have any opportunity. This was the first pullback to the BBC. Once it pulled back to the BBC, um, I had said I want to see it down close before I get short, and then I went on to trade in the Russell again, and I missed it, but right here was the down close. Um, and that would have, if we had shorted there at the down close, we'll say 13,100, okay? It dropped down to 13... 130.90 um, with a 10 tick profit. All right, it gave a bullish cross with a pullback to the BBC. I I wasn't even looking at it at the time. It was 11.24. We didn't we didn't try to go long. Then it crossed again, bearish right here. And on this pullback, it was you know it never gave. I mean, it never gave a pullback. The only pullback just happened right in here. All right, and it seems to be chopping around right here a little bit. I think it's trying to get up to the. Uh, the ES is trying to get up to the weekly trading zone here, and if that happens, it should push this up. All right, those were the YM trades. Let me bring over the NQ. Okay, the NQ had a had a pretty good, well, an opportunity, I'll say. Okay, let's just go with that. Um, using the double divergence, I had drawn in some this morning, some, some of the opportunities. This was at the open. Uh, it was a chance to short right here. Um, let's see, right over here we had double bullish divergence for a chance to go long right in there, okay. Um, let's see, I'm just looking down at the bottom for, for the places where we had the double divergence. Okay, right here we had the double divergence for the chance to go long right there. Um, over here, we had bullish divergence but we were below the BBC so we, were, we would have been waiting for some bearish divergence which happened right over here. Chance to go short right there. Um, we had some bullish divergence right here, but it, it was flatlined. Okay. Um, let's see. Scrolling over here. Right here. Okay, right here was a short opportunity. Um, over here, we had some bearish divergence and the close down right there. All right, for more shorting opportunity. Over here, we had mixed divergence, so nothing in there. Over here, we had bullish divergence, but the MA1 was below the BBC. Again, so nothing there. Over here we have bullish divergence right now with a cross up and a close up above, so we should move up from right here. Okay. This is the NQ four tick range, right? It should go up from right there. Now let's move that off to the side and I'll bring over the C. Hang on, just a second. Now for some reason I can't get my six E. Here it is. Alright. Um, the 6E this morning, I didn't. I wasn't really watching the 6E because I was focused mainly on the Russell trade and the Russell this morning. Um, again, let's get in here on the 6E. Right here, the green was leaving the white on the way down, so you weren't expecting the BBC to hold. Um, it didn't hold right here, but then once it did hold, every time you had bearish divergence, like right in here and right in here, the close down below the MA1 was an opportunity to enter. See, the bearish divergence is right here. When I say bearish divergence, I mean just on this indicator right here. Just this one. Right there. All right. Divergence between these lines and that line. And it's bearish because the cycle is in the oversold area. All right. So you could have entered right here or right here in those instances. Right here, the white was leading the green on the way up. So that says the BBC should hold. And we had some bullish divergence with it. So that suggested it should you, know, you should get a pretty good move up off the BBC right there. Okay, right here we have some bearish divergence again. Um, the white was not leading the green when it broke right here, su suggesting that the BBC will not hold. Um, let's see, over here, when it broke the elbow, the white was leading the green when the elbow was broken right here. Now when I say the elbow is broken, what I mean is this. I know I'm talking really fast, but that's because I want to get Mike Reed in here. Um, you guys can watch this on the recap later. Okay. Um, what I mean is when price knocks the elbow to the upside, meaning the dotted lines start printing right here, at the time that it does that, if the white is leading the green, the white line down here is leading the green, then the BBC should hold on the first pullback. Right here is the first pullback. Okay, the BBC held and pushed it up. Um, 3305 up to 3315. 10 ticks so far. Okay?
that was the 6e. Let's see, I've done the ym, the nq, the 6e, and the es. Now I'll do the Russell. Okay. We took a lot of Russell trades this morning. Um, we started off, we had, we had a rough start right at the beginning. I think um, I marked them on this chart, right? Yeah, right here at the beginning, I had three losing trades to start the morning. All right. And then I, I sort of switched gears. We had this one here that I didn't take. This one over here um, was a long trade. I don't know if I took that one. I, I don't think I did. I did take this short right here. Um, it got 10 ticks back on that one. There was a trade here that I didn't take, a trade here that I did take. Um, I didn't mark this up. I think I stopped marking this chart at, at this point. But with this chart right here with the Russell, um, we had a bunch of people... Well, we had a, a fair amount of uh, folks in the in the um, live trading room this morning who were there, who were on trial, okay? And so I, I really wanted to focus on the Russell because we said we were going to try to do that this week. With that said, um, the setup is when price closes below the MA1 and the green line is also below the MA1. And this purple one right here is rolled down. And the black right here is rolled down. Now, this cross right here gives you a heads up to let you know that it's coming or it's likely to come. The close below the MA1 is an opportunity right there. Okay, so that's how you could have gotten into that trade and that trade. And actually this one right here on the long side. You see everything was going up right here. And right there. And right there. And you even had the little heads up cross right there. All right. Um, opportunity down, back up, back down, back up, back down, back up. Um, over here on the short side again, on the way down. Um, right there. Right there. And there was the heads up. And right there. Uh, this one here on the long side didn't go anywhere. You would have stopped out on that one. All right. It gave you an opportunity to get it right back here on the downside. Then again on the long side. A little bit right here on the downside. More on the long side. And you know, right now we're into live market right now. This was all during the break here right at the end. But let's go here because I did take a bunch of trades off of this chart. All right. Um... Let's see, after starting out, I took a long trade here. I got short, I mean, I got out of it right there. I ended up taking, I didn't take the full 10 ticks profit on that. But you can see we had the double divergence with the cross up right there. Now, the difference between this chart here and this chart here, on this chart, the green line, which is our BBC, is slower than the green line on this chart. The green line on this chart over here is not the BBC. Okay. And the MA1 on this chart is faster than the MA1 on this chart. This is our standard MA1, and I sped it up on this chart. Okay. That gives us earlier entries in the trades with the double divergence and the cross-up. Um, basically, what I was looking for here was the cross from either oversold or overbought areas with a cross or a close on the other side of the MA1 is what I was looking for primarily. If you had double divergence, that added, you know, like more confirmation to the trade. All right. So here we went long, took a little bit of profit. Here we went, what did we do? We went long here, but we got in a little bit late. Um, we went long here, and we took a small loss. I think we took five ticks loss on that one. Uh, there was a shorting opportunity in here. I don't remember if we took it or not. But you see we had a double divergence, the cross down, and this arrow should be pointing right there. The close down below the MA1. We went, what did we do here? We had the cross up, so we went long in here. And the arrows are right on top of each other all over the place right here, because I think I did it twice. We went long, and, oh no, I'm sorry. I shorted the B, is that right? I can't see it. Nope, that's not the one where I shorted the BBC. Um, anyway, we went long. And then we went long again, it looks like. Over here, I shorted in here, and I took a little bit of profit. 
I shorted here and got break even on this one, and then it dropped down. I remember that one was frustrating because it was going back and forth a lot. I think I got break even or plus one tick on that. Um, over here we had some bullish divergence, the cross up. So the place to enter this trade would have been right in here. I don't remember if I entered it. I don't think I did. Um, right here. The place to go long was right there, up to the BBC. Then once it hit the BBC and we had double divergence on the short side with the cross down, that was a good opportunity to short, and I did. Um, this was at the end of the morning show. Okay, I remember I took 10 ticks off of this. I pointed this one out and this one to the guys that were in the room at that time. Uh, Charles was in there, and uh, Dan, I believe, were asking about this one. But uh, and that was that was pretty much the morning on the Russell. Okay, so we ended the morning up on the Russell, down one tick on the YM, and um, that's it. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up right here because I want to bring Mike Reed in. Um, if anybody has any questions about anything, um, I don't even have my question box up. Hold on a minute. Phil, I will send you an email. Okay, you need to be a partner to get in there. Okay, I think I already did send you an email, but you need to be a partner to get into the partners meeting. All right, um, and that's that's always the case. Once you're a partner, you're a, you'll appreciate that. Um, all right. That said, I'm going to stop the recording right here. If anybody has any questions, feel free to type them in, or you can email me at support at cfrn.net. All right, that will go to Dwayne and myself, so one of us will get your response.